The idea of Nazi hunting evokes images of secret operations in far-flung corners of the world. But how does it actually work? People have been hunting Nazis since the end of the Second World War, and the research was pioneered by a young architect named Simon Wiesenthal. In 1945, Wiesenthal began collecting documents on the Nazi regime, which eventually led to the arrests of some of the most notorious war criminals, including Hermine Braunsteiner, Franz Stangl, and Adolf Eichmann. Braunsteiner was an assistant prison warden who lived in Queens, New York, following the war. She served at the Ravensbrück concentration camp and the Maidonic death camp. In 1981, she was convicted of murdering 80 people, abetting the murder of 102 children, and collaborating in the murder of 1,000 prisoners. Franz Stangl was an SS commandant at Sobibor in Treblinka. He fled to Brazil, was extradited, tried, and found guilty of the murder of 900,000 people. Adolf Eichmann was a lieutenant colonel and the main logistical coordinator behind the Shoah. He fled to Argentina after the war, but was captured by Israeli operatives and sentenced to death by an Israeli court for crimes against humanity. Currently one of the most prominent Nazi hunters is Ephraim Zuroff, who works for the Simon Wiesenthal Center. They're essentially researchers who comb through documents and compile a list of most wanted Nazis in order to pressure local governments to pursue and try them. From year to year, they update and adjust the list, adding, removing, and re-ranking war criminals. Individuals are pulled from a pool of living candidates who can conceivably be tried for their crimes. As more information comes to light, some move up the list, while others move down. The selection process has three criteria. Did they have command responsibility? Did they personally commit murder? And what was the scope of their crimes? For example, the most wanted Nazi on the current list is Laszlo Stari who was recently charged by the Hungarian government and who had command responsibility as the head of the Royal Hungarian Police Force in Hungarian-occupied Slovakia. Although he didn't personally kill anyone, he was responsible for the deportation of over 15,000 people to Auschwitz. Success for Nazi hunters has a number of components. The first involves publicizing the criminals to the media. A second success involves the launch of an official investigation, followed by an indictment or an extradition and a possible trial, conviction, and punishment. But the open question is how long Nazi hunting will continue. Since most of the people sought by the Simon Wiesenthal Center are elderly, some day soon these individuals, as well as the notion of Nazi hunting itself, will just be memories. 